So now we're going to look at a more specific examination of potential first CMCJ arthritis or pain. So again, you would start with your introductions, bare below the elbows, and as we have done for the general examination, but really focusing on this condition. For looking, you would have a look over the area in question. So if I can ask you to turn your hands over, you are looking at the shape of the joint. So the, the first CMCJ is a junction between the first metacarpal and the trapezium. As far as where it is on your surface anatomy, if you place your thumb just in the anatomical snuff box at the tip of the radial styloid there, usually you'll find this first CMCJ is at the top of your thumb. So about a centimetre and a half above there. And in the gap there is a bit of the scaphoid and the trapezium until you get to the joint. So when you're looking, you're looking for abnormalities in this area. And the abnormalities is if the joint is subluxed, which is the common occurrence, is that you might get a shouldering, which is better to view if you supinate the patient's hand. And so instead of a nice smooth line there, you might get a, a fairly prominent step. And this is because in the early stages, the joint becomes arthritic, but as it becomes more mobile and the ligaments just at the palmar aspect, the volar beak ligament, attenuate, the joint can sublux and making it more prominent just at the back of the, the metacarpal. Also, the, if you follow this line around, you can see areas at the front here that you may see depigmentation if, if they've had steroid injections and some of this went subcutaneous or thinning of the, um, the fat in this area. When you're looking at the thumb, it's, oh, as the base subluxes, what can also happen is that the metacarpal AD ducts. So the thumb actually comes into the palm there because the base has fallen out laterally. So this is an AD duction deformity that you're looking for. And with this, you can make the athena eminence more prominent because it's bulked up. But also this can, in time, become less prominent because the, due to disuse, the athena eminence can waste or well, there is an association between carpal tunnel syndrome and first CMCJ arthritis, so that could also cause wasting of the thin eminence that you'd be able to see. If you imagine your thumb dropping in like that, it's very difficult then to grasp items. So as a compensatory mechanism, patients tend to start to get a gradual hyperextension of the MCPJ. And so you'll find that the thumb may have fallen in there and have a hyperextension of the MCPJ here, and then the IPJ flexes to make it a more functional position to them to actually grip objects. So th this is when they have quite marked base of thumb arthritis and there is subluxation. Other aspects to look for really are other markers of osteoarthritis. So if I can actually just turn your palms over, you may be looking at Bouchard's and Hebidens nodes. So Bouchard's at the PIPJ and Hebidens at the DIPJs which are little bony osteophytes, which indicates osteoarthritis around the joints there. The final thing to look at with first CMCJ arthritis is whether the scars from previous surgery. So the scars either can be dorsal or palmar. Commonly, a dorsal scar is around two to three centimeters directly over the dorsum of the thumb, just distal to the radial styloid. A palmar scar, which is called the Wagner approach, can work along the edge of the thena eminence along the junction between the glabrous and non-glabrous skin, so the glabrous being the palmar skin, non-glabrous being the rest of the skin. And this comes all the way down the corner and onto the top of the flex carpe radialis. You may also see an incision either from a, with a dorsal or palmar incisions. The scars can be around eight centimeters proximal to the FCR uh, insertion, because this can be used as a harvest to support the base of the thumb during the operation. So these three scars are the ones to look out for. When you're moving on to feel, you obviously need to discuss with the patient if it's painful again. And then you get, need to go back to your surface anatomy, which we discussed to see where it would be painful. So if you place your thumb just on the radial styloid here and mark around one and a half centimeters, you can often feel the joints. And on yourself, if you move the thumb, you have to feel where the joint is in the end of the metacarpal. 
the more distorted it is with osteophytes or subluxation, the more difficult sometimes it is to feel. But it can be quite tender just over the back here, over the, the dorsal edge, or over the volar aspect. And it's usually just a centimetre or so into the thena eminence. So continuing feel, as I've already suggested, is there should be a smooth curvature if you roll your finger up the side of the thumb. However, if there is an obvious step there, then it would suggest a subluxation. For movement, you can ask the patients to actively move and then you can look at passive movements to see how much their thumb can come across. Often if it's very, very adducted, they have very little movement at the CMCJ. But you can ask the patient to try and bring the thumb over to their little finger and see how much movement you get, which gives you a combined movement of the CMCJ, MCBJ and IPJ. And then ask them to extend and this again gets the full extension of those joints. You may be aware of a marked hyperextension at this joint. Often patients have a, a loss of flexion at the MCPJ if they have significant hyperextension at the MCPJ due to tightening dorsally. You also can ask the patient to abduct, so lift the thumb up into the air to see how much movement they have, which is again often limited because much of this is from the CMCJ. The Special tests that are involved in the base of thumb arthritis are the reduction test or the grind test. So reduction tests can be quite painful, so it's not overly advised as a medical student in an exam to cause pain to patients, but it can be a very good test to isolate this joint. And this involves when there is a subluxation of the joint at the first CMCJ, warning the patient that it may be uncomfortable but instead of just gently stroking over there to feel the subluxation, actually press a little bit more firmly to try and reduce the joint. You sometimes feel a slight reduction and with pain along this area. The second, which is more common test, is the grind test. And to do this, you need to grind the first CMCJ. People often hold the thumb and give it a bit of a wiggle like that, which isn't ideal because you're not really immobilizing the MCPJ and you're moving lots of joints. Therefore, it's best to hold around the MCPJ, grip the metacarpal, load the CMCJ, and then rotate it. So really, you're protecting the rest of the thumb and focusing the movements on the CMCJ, which is often painful in this condition.